The war for it proved to be a place to hone a political attitude of defiance. Now it was here that my grandfather's bubbling anger over the treatment of Aboriginal people would be sharpened to a razor's edge. That was on the Aboriginal Committee, the yeah. Aboriginal Rights Committee, oh. that was set up in the early 60s. It wasn't really until 63 when I joined the Waterside Workers' Union that I started to become really political. The major one was the Gurindji walking off of Wayville Station and settling on Whitey Creek. I took my truck down with a load of food. They were just so overjoyed. They were getting support this time from the trade union movement. The Federal Council for the Advancement of Aboriginals and Torres Strait Islanders. The CAPSI set up a campaign to change the Federal Constitution. Referendum Section 51 and 127. Of course, uh, a few wharfies, and Joe McGuinness was a wharfie too. He sort of encourages me and Jack Asson and Kevin Kelly and, and John Delaney, and we were sort of the wharfies delegation, Aboriginal wharfies delegation. In 1988, of course, we had that massive march where thousands of us converged on Sydney, Kevin Tory and Kevin Cook, and so we converged on there and away we went. The issue of a nuclear waste dump is massive for the MUA. It's our members of the First Australians that have to handle it as this stuff has to come into a port somewhere. Two hundred years ago, when the process of colonisation destroyed Aboriginal people's collective strength, it's ironic. Over two hundred years later, you had a Conservative government trying to do exactly the same to working men and women in this country. I think we should get together and try and nail some of these. I'm here in Sydney today for the first National Indigenous MUA Committee meeting. The first time that an Indigenous committee has been formed for the MUA. We've actually done a tremendous amount of work uh, developing a position for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Gurindji mob up front with the banner, come here please. The feeling that we all had when we started the march yesterday, it was really special. The people were able to touch the artwork, they were able to read the artwork. It's the first time we've had a theme that is in an Aboriginal language. I present to you Vicky Mortar. Yeah. My name is Vicky Mortar, standing proudly before you as an Aboriginal South Sea Islander descendant. I say this we can do if we have courage like Lingari did. I think it goes to the way that laws are made in this country. The laws are made by mostly non-Indigenous men. It's one of the reasons why I think the Uluru Statement is so important. It calls for a First Nations voice enshrined in the Constitution. And until we start to say what happens in our communities, until we start to have the influence on the laws to make sure that this is taken into account, then we're not going to see justice. Aboriginal people, 